Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, October 23rd, here with a midweek market recap video. We're gonna cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So posting this a little bit late today, gonna be a little bit shorter again. I'm still traveling on the road right now, so a little bit tougher for me to get the schedule down to get these videos out, but uh, I wanna at least do a few minutes on here uh, just discussing the market environment. We had a wild day today. Let's jump into the charts with the S&P 500. This is the weekly time frame where we like to start our analysis. You can see we are down 1% so far, uh, only Tuesday, but on the week, and we are well off of the lows. That is constructive to see, uh, not so constructive to see that we are below last week's lows. So a little bit of something for both the bulls and bears here, but when we look here at the critical levels on at least the intermediate term time frame, we have this nice round 2700 number in the S&P 500. We uh, undercut that briefly today, but we did get that nice rally, and you can see again, we are down so far 0.98% uh, on this weekly bar as it stands so far. It's gonna be very interesting to see how we close out this week. Notice that we did undercut the lows here from uh, this, this big sell-off bar back from the Friday, the 12th of October. Uh, we got as low as 27.10. We undercut that today by about 20 handles, but we popped right back above it. So uh, the structure here on this, on this weekly chart, it's way too early. Uh, to know or to call a bottom here, but this is a uh, interesting spot where we undercut a significant low here. And if the market can in fact uh, hold up above 2,700, close the week strong and continue to move sideways, maybe we have some double bottom here. Again, it is very premature, I'm not calling for it, but it's something to at least keep an open mind about uh, that we could start to get some structure, some support to develop in here around this 2,700 level, regardless of whether whether or not that holds or not, I do think we still have just a very important 2700 level to pay attention to, whether you're on uh, kind of the bull or bear camp here uh, for this market. When we zoom out just a little bit, we are still very clearly broken trend that we've been in since April as the market was grinding higher for the past six or so months. We still remain kind of broken here and looking for support in an increased state of volatility. When we go down to the daily chart, Again, we see the nice big range today, but we do see the save here by the bulls. 2,700, again, undercutting the lows we made back on Thursday the 11th and closing above it. So what we wanna see now is stabilization, some proof, a follow through day to the upside. Those would all be good steps in the right direction for the bull case right now. We'd wanna see volatility continue to come, come out of the market. It did close higher today. The VIX is back above 20, uh, closed up uh, certainly near the lows of the session, but we are higher above 20. So what we want to see is some of these uh, levels start to get taken down here. We want to see the VIX get back into the teens. Uh, you want to see breath start to firm up here. You want to see some of those leaders start to actually firm up. You want to see good reactions out of earnings. These are all kind of developments that includes that you want to look for in this market environment. But regardless, it is still in a state of increased volatility. We should be uh, mindful of that overnight risk. I do think it's easy to get chopped up here. 2,800 to 2,700. That's a 100 point range for the S&P 500, but that's the near term levels that I'd be paying attention to. And I do think, uh, you know, whether you're playing either side right now, just mind that position size, understand the risk, know where your stops are, uh, and don't get too uh, confident one way or the other. I do think we're still in, uh, you know, a little bit of a chop here and we're letting the market kind of digest uh, with some of these earnings and some of the more macro catalysts that are going on right now, Fed speak, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, that is the SP 500, 2700, 2800. Those are the ranges I'd be watching. If we take out today's lows and close below it, uh, that is, uh, again, just a much risk off, be cautious, stay defensive, uh, unless you're really tactical, nimble, trading those intraday ranges. If we start taking out 2700, today's lows, that's a good line in the sand to use. That's what I'd be paying attention to. IWM, we go there to the Russell 2000. Again, very similar co comments here, did sell off. We are below, however, uh, the lows here made back on Friday, the 12th. So we are kind of closing at new daily lows in the midst of this pullback here. Uh, so we continue to see some pain. Uh, we did get a nice bounce off of these lows around that 150 level. But when we look here at the weekly time frame, it's now been week or going on week six here of uh, selling for the Russell 2000. So this continues to be a, a thorn in the bull case right now. And we really want to see some of these small caps stabilize. Again, follow through data to the upside, getting back above, you know, 155, 150 
156. Those would be constructive levels in the short term. Uh, for now, it is still a very cautionary look here by small caps. And the NASDAQ 100 is the best looking right now out of the three, you can see here we did almost close green on the session and we did close uh, above the past three days low. So we actually, in fact, we did have that gap down. We did probe lower. Notice we did not take out Thursday 11th lows. We managed to hold above it and we managed to almost stay green here. So a little bit of, of uh, at least resilience here in the queues. If we look at that weekly bar, you can see uh, above last week's lows uh, and, and never took out the 12th lows on um, you know the, the two weeks ago when we had the ultimate low down around 167.81. So some good signs there. Again, not out of the woods yet. Still a vulnerable market here. Uh, it is still should have uh, you know benefit of the doubt to the sellers at this point, but at least a little initial uh, constructive action there uh, on a relative basis. Now, if we go to some of the other major markets here quick, we'll go TLT, which is still flat here on the week. Uh, it's been uh, kind of trading within last week's range or so. Hasn't really made too much of a move. Struck Structurally, I, you know, my opinion hasn't changed here. As long as we're below 117, uh, the benefit of the doubt to me still goes to the bears here. It still isn't a sell type of market for TLT. Getting back above 117, that would change my opinion. But for now, uh, still need to be careful there for TLT. If we go to oil next. This is uh, continuing now in its third week, pulling back here, back down to $14. The next major sort of uh, reference level that I'd pay attention to would be the August lows here, which come in around 1350. If we look here on a weekly chart, maybe uh, you know we have a little more selling to go through to see if we can kind of retest where buyers stepped in a couple of months ago. That's the level I'd be paying attention to. It is a little extended here to the downside. So again, it's not an easy short by any means. There's good volume coming in today. So something to pay attention to getting close to an inflection point, uh, but sellers in the short term are in control. Natural gas, on the other hand, is consolidating. We've talked about this. It continues to move sideways here. I like the action. I, I prefer this to consolidate for the next week or two, just really kind of fuel up for the next move. Uh, and if this does turn into a continuation pattern, then look, look for about 2760 or so for that upside trigger. Finally, if we look at metals, we'll go to gold next, which uh, did close up today half a percent, 0.6%, uh, well off of the highs of the session, but we're still holding above, which we talked about this 115 level. That was the breakout level from back here on the 11th of October. We're still holding above it. So to me, in the short term, that is constructive. The longer the bulls can hold above 115, you can see the MACD is, is still inching towards highs here. So momentum trying to increase good signs there for gold in the short term. Silver, um, again, uh, kind of similar comments. It is inching up here at its recent highs. Uh, and it is getting tighter. You know, I, I've kind of been dismissing silver as not as attractive, but it is starting now to, to put in enough of some sideways movement here. It is fueling up. There is some clear resistance here into this $14 area. It is where we kind of topped out uh, and found some, some uh, supply in here in, in August. We kind of broke down. We traded back up to it. And now you can see we're kind of dancing around here. So we do have kind of a clear actionable entry point here above $14. If the bulls can get us through there, ideally on volume, um, then and that would, uh, you know, that would be a good for maybe a short-term trade there in silver. So that is uh, that is what I'm looking at here for markets. Again, a little bit brief, a little bit late, but hopefully you guys are navigating this volatility. Uh, and I will be on the road and traveling. A little disruption here for the rest of this week. Um, so I'm going to try and get out some of these videos and usual updates as best I can. So that's all for me. Thanks so much. Uh, if you like these videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday is when we are releasing videos. Thanks so much and talk to you in the next update.